All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. We are going to talk about OpenVos today. Uh, the first thing we need to do, we should already have it installed. If you don't, look back at my other video and we show you how to install it. We're going to operate this off of Kali Linux box. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to bring up that terminal. I'm going to blow this up for you a little bit. And we're going to do a sudo, sudo, gvm start, just like that. So sudo space gvm dash start. We're going to hit that button right there, hit enter and then tour, and then it's gonna take it a few seconds and it's gonna load up our GVM webpage, our OpenVos webpage for us to get started on this. Uh, and here you go, you see it counting down. Now, listen, if it if it doesn't boot up immediately, if you type in this, you log into Kali and you go straight for it, uh, sometimes it does have a little bit of lag, let it boot up a little bit, especially if you're not running a lot of resources on the back end. Uh, you may be just let it sit for two or three minutes and then come back to it. Uh, we've already admin and password. I saved my password in there, so I didn't have to keep on going back and forth because this is a home lab. It's not something we're going to do in an enterprise network. We're going to go ahead and sign that in. Uh, this is a typical dashboard that you should see when you very first start to boot up. However, what you need to check right off the bat is we need to go to administration and we need to go to feed status right here. Now this feed status is going to show current on mine. I let this thing run yesterday and download all the latest and greatest libraries uh, get all that juicy information into it. If it says that it's not current all these, you need to stop, go get yourself a drink, go get dinner, go get lunch, let it download all of the juicy favorites that were here. So right off the bat, we need to point that one out, okay? All right, the next portion we're gonna do is we're gonna check our ports. We're gonna go to configuration, port list, and you can see that right off the bat, it gives you three sets of ports. We can see total of 5836, 5836 TCP, zero UDP, 11, uh, 318, and you can see that it only gives us 5,836 TCP ports and then 5,482 UDP ports, I can't talk today, and then all TCP and the top 100 for UDP, 65,635 uh, TCP ports and then 100 uh, UDP ports. So we're gonna add to that. We're gonna add a little bit more. We're gonna do a new port list. We're just gonna call that one all, A-L-L, -L, if I can type right. A L L, uh, and we're just going to say all ports, and then if you can see here, it says uh, TCP 579, and here we're just going to put T where it says one through five, so on and so forth. We're going to change that to T one through 65,535, comma U, and then we're going to get rid of that one through 65,535 and we're going to save that and then we've got that all ports right at the very top this is going to allow us to scan all the ports on udp and tcp across our entire system scans we're going to go to task wizard right here it's that little magic wand thing that you got going on right here and you'll notice that you can actually start immediately scanning a single ip address and for our home network for today, that's really what we're just gonna do. But we need an IP address. So we're gonna drive back in to our trusty terminal right here and we're gonna do some really cool things. Uh, we need to find our IP addresses. So fastest way to find out IP addresses is nmap. Uh, since I'm not root, I need to do a sudo nmap. And I know I'm on the 10 network, but how do you know if you're on the 10 network? Let's take this back a little bit. Let's do an ifconfig. Then that's gonna show us where our network is. Now, this computer is on 10.0.2.19. This is the IP address of this Kali box. Uh, I want to scan all of the 10.0.2 subnet, and so I'm going to type in sudo nmap, and we'll do 10.0.2.0 forward slash 24. 24 meaning the last uh, octet right there, that zero, that point zero. We're going to scan all 256 IP addresses. That zero through 255 gives us 256. Go ahead and press enter while it's doing that. Uh, and it should start to come out. Now this is just a basic scan. Uh, I could do more with nmap and I think I actually, I, I will do a video later on the road, uh, specifically for nmaps for beginners uh, to kind of dive into it. There's a few uh, uh, different attachments that we could use to that, SV, SN, so on and so forth, whether we're looking for services or maybe the operating system. Uh, and maybe we'll dive into that a little bit too while we're going through this. Okay, so our nmap scan came back and we can start to see that I've got quite a few of VMs running on my system. Now I know right now I've got two Kali boxes up and going. I've got a Windows Server 2019, I've got a Windows 10, 
Uh, and then I've got that Keoptrix 1 box up and going. So how do I kind of figure out what's going on and what's not? What is actually a real machine versus what's not a real machine? Uh, because you notice I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got more IP addresses than I do actual machines running on my network. Well, we're looking for these ports. So this one right here, we'll start with this. This 10.0.2.13, I know from experience based on the ports that are already open that this is Keoptrix 1, but let's, let's pretend that I didn't. How would I tell if this is not a Keoptrix 1 machine? Well, let's do an nmap. We'll do a sudo nmap in map, we'll do a switch, that's that dash, lowercase s, uppercase v, and then we'll do 10.0.2.13, and we'll run that, and that's gonna run a services scan on that uh, specific IP address. And that should be able to tell me what kind of operating system. Now there is a specific switch for all of my, my students and everybody else that's looking at me going, wait a second, isn't there a, a specific switch that we could use for operating systems? Yes, there is. Um, I like this one because it kind of throws in the different ports and it kind of expands on that. And let's see, does it tell me what my operating system is? Now it tells me that it's running Apache 1.132. It tells me that it's Red Hat Linux. Now I know that Red Hat Linux is specifically with a Keoptrix 1. Um, and that's mostly because I know that's the only machine on my network that has that. But let's pretend I didn't know that that was the actual operating system. I could do a sudo in map switch capital O 10.0.2.13 and we throw that in there and now it should come back with that specific Linux operating system uh, for a Keoptrix one. Uh, now I still need to figure out what my Windows machine is and here we go we've got right there running Linux 2.4 2.49 to 2.418 being our, our uh, most likely uh, and we'll we'll go into uh, NinMap a little bit more further later down the road. But for today, we know that this is my Keoptrix 1 machine right there. So I would annotate that. I would actually mark that down. I've got a notepad in front of me. So 10.0.2.13. We know that's Keoptrix. And I just like to make a note of that. Um, it would be better if I put this all together. Now, I can't do that with Keoptrix without hacking into it. Uh, but it would be better if I just did a static IP address. And I'm going to do that a little bit later when we start doing a, a PFSense and a little bit of firewalls. Um, and probably Splunk and when we get into a Sims, we're going to go back through and we're going to change our IP addresses to do that. Uh, but with this specific machine, because it's not something I have access to on a normal basis, uh, we're going to pretend that I, I can't actually make that a specific. So let's look at some of our other IP addresses we've got going on. Uh, this one right here, 5357. Most likely this one right here is going to be my Windows 2019. So let's find out. I'm just going to press the up arrow and I'm going to change the IP address to 21. That should give me the operating system. I'm just going to double check to make sure. Yeah, it was 21. Uh, I'm guessing that this is my Windows 2019 based on past experience, but it could be. I could be mistaken, right? And then we've got 215 and then 2.3. Now, most likely, most likely, dot three, dot two, and dot one are all related to the actual virtual box. But I'm not sure that in this case, this is actually true. And the reason I say that is because I've got these two ports opened up on 2.2, which makes me think that this is most likely uh, going to be my Windows 10. And we'll, we'll check that out in a minute. So here we go. Uh, OS scan was unreliable, so it really can't depict an, uh, an OS. Missing closed TCP port for results. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to be my Windows Server 2019. And the reason that it's not being able to pick anything up is because it's missing that TCP port. And we really haven't set that Windows 2019 up for anything, which is why I wanted to bring that Keoptrix machine into bear when we actually ran our OpenBoss for the first time. Uh, but let's run this on our 2.2 because I am curious. I am curious if 2.2 is going to be our Windows 10 machine. Uh, regardless, it should... I'm, I'm thinking that it will provide me a little bit. If not, I can always open up a, a, a port on it to figure out for sure. But for the purposes of today's exercise, I really don't need to. Uh, I'm actually probably going way further into the weeds than I really need to. But let's, I'm curious. So let's find out. So here we go. Now, you'll notice when we scanned it with Nmap, it comes back before 2.2 only had these first two ports open. Now we can see that it's also got ICS lap on there. Uh, Let's see, Grandstream embedded, might be a Garmin. It doesn't know what it is. It, it, it's completely lost on this one. Uh, now I am curious though, so I am gonna bring over 
I want to know if I'm right. So I'm going to bring over Windows 10. Right, this is the Windows 10 box that I got going on. If I wanted to check just for my own sake, because you know I have access to it in my own remote lab, I would type CMD. That's going to give me that command prompt. And I could just type in ipconfig. And for $2 million, I was incorrect. 2.2 is not Windows 10. 2.15 is Windows 10. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. That means I've got something at 2.2. And I will figure that out later. Um, but for today, I get to be wrong, which sucks. But that's okay. Now, what about the other one? Let's bring up that Windows 2019. Let me bring this up. I am curious, am I right on this one? Let's see, we'll bring this one up real quick. It doesn't like me, it's lagging out. I probably should have developed a little bit more resources, devoted a little bit more resources to this one. We'll do the same thing, it's gonna be a CMD. Get that command prompt. And am I two for two today, IP config. And 21, I believe we said it was 21. I'm pretty sure, let's find out. Let's find out, what, was it 21? It was, it was, so I was right on 29, and I'm shooting 50%, 50% on my guesses, right? Uh, this one concerns me though. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that this is part of the virtual uh, box overlay right here. So even though it's got those open ports up, that's my guess, or, <coughs> or it's my host machine, which is possible. Um, okay, so let's move on. Let's get back into OpenVOS today. We're gonna scan. Now I know that Windows 2019 is not gonna provide us a lot of stuff. It's not gonna provide us a lot of goodies because it's a base operating system. There's really nothing on it, but let's scan it. Let's see what happens. Uh, failed to find config, da da da. It's giving me errors. Uh, let's find out. You can create a new task yourself. It comes back with failed to find config, DABA, 5CA, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and what this is indicative of is the program not updating all the way yet. So I kind of started before I should have, which I'm sure is another thing that my students often see. And I can check that. If I go down to config, schedule, scan configs, you'll notice there are no scan configs available, none whatsoever. So I'm gonna let this update uh, and then we will come back to it and we will see uh, what it should look like and then we'll rerun the scan the way it's supposed to. Okay, so here we are, we're back at configuration, uh, scan configs, and you can see here we've got a base scan, discovery, entry, and full and fast. Full and fast having the MVTs, uh, the vulnerabilities that we're looking for. So we should be able to run our scan now correctly, now that the system is completely updated. I am gonna check the uh, feed status real quick and make sure we're current still, we are. So let's go back to scans. We're gonna hit that magic wand again, and magic wand again, task wizard, and let's bring it back in there, 10.0.2.13, and money this time. Yes, all right, so it's gonna to start to run that scan on the Keoptrix 1 machine, uh, and let's go ahead and run a different scan at the same time. Let's do the 21, 10.0.2.21. We'll start that scan as well. This one is going to run against our Windows server. So I'm gonna let those run and well, you don't have to wait cause you could just, you know, watch the video, but I'm going to wait for this thing to come in and then we will be right back. Okay, so the report is done. And as you can see, we've got our Windows 2019 server uh, and it only, it didn't come back with anything, right? And the reason it didn't come back with anything is because it's a brand new server. It really doesn't have any problems. We can look at the information. So I think I may have gone too fast on here. If you click on the report, so I clicked on Friday, May 12th, the bottom one, which is my Windows 2019 server. I click on that, I can go to results, and you can see that it really doesn't have anything, right? It's not showing any open ports, it's not showing any real thing. It's saying, hey, this really isn't a good machine to run a report on because it doesn't, it's not doing anything. So it's, it's good news. Completely secure. Uh, let's look at Keoptrix 1, however. If we look at that one, we can start to see that it's got 29 of 251 results. If we look at those results, you can start to see that it's got depreciated or deprecated, excuse me, SSH1 protocol detection, and it's showing me all these issues inside the system, all of these issues. If we look at hosts, it says, hey, operating system is Linux. It's got that little Linux sign. I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, and then it's saying authorize, it's got apps, ports. We look at ports, it's got 2280 and 443. And it's saying that, hey, we've got all these little issues. And you can click on these to see what's going on. If we go to CVEs, it'll actually tell you that in 2001, issue 0361, 
deprecated SSH protocol detection. If I click on that, it'll tell me what I need to do to fix it, what the problem is, and all that other good stuff, right? So solution, reconfigure SSH service to only provide and accept SSH protocol version two or SSH two. All right, so this is OpenVOS in a nutshell. Um, someone asked me, one of my old students who's graduated asked me to do Nessus. So I will do that. I, I think I'm gonna do that on Monday or Tuesday. I got, the weekend is pretty booked uh, for me and then Monday is when I usually grade a lot of papers, but I think I'm gonna try to do it on Monday. I'll install Nessus on this machine and we'll run the same scans on Keoptrix 1 and that Windows 2019 that it really doesn't have anything going on with it. And we'll see what pops up. Uh, but this is OpenVOS. I hope it was educational. I hope it makes a lot of sense to you. Uh, and then we will go from there. So Nessus next. And then I think I'm gonna do PFSense. I think I'm gonna jump into PFSense. Um, I was asked to do Splunk. And I, I think I'm gonna mess around with Splunk a little bit. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, Elk Stack as well. Elk Stack is gonna take a while though. Uh, but let me let me look into that. All right. Thank you all uh, Don't forget to subscribe like and grab that alert if you don't mind I would appreciate it and we will talk to you later. Have a good one